Hello and welcome back to No Man's Sky, everybody. This is Alan Paul, and uh, this may just be the very last episode of the uh, series that we're doing here. I might do one more. I haven't decided yet, but that's because we've pretty much established so much, and we've completed the main storyline, got everything done. As you might see here, I'm not standing by my ship in Eisentum. I'm standing here because I did my complete repairs on myself. And my starship, I got everything going. And you're probably wondering, well, where'd you get that deuterium from? As you can see, I do have some dihydrogen here, but I've also got deuterium. Deuterium is, just so you know, it actually even stays here. It says deuterium very rarely occurs naturally. It is very hard to find. You might find it as a secondary element, but most of the time you won't find it anywhere. But you can see it, the supply comes from the processing of dihydrogen and tritium in refiners. In order to do that, you obviously need at least a medium refiner. You can't do it in anything else because you have two slots that you have to fill in in order to get it. And just so you can see what happens here, I'm not going to actually create any, but it's, uh, let me see, dihydrogen, where'd you go? There it is. Dihydrogen, and we need tritium, which is going to be in my starship. There it is. And it is a one-to-one -one ratio. One of, one of each of these will equal one of these and give you the deuterium you need. And you see it says 170 because I only have 170 dihydrogen at this time. Kind of running a little bit low on that, right, as we, as we speak. So that is why you need a medium refiner. So that's how you get deuterium. Anyway, so I'm back at my main base here, and I went ahead and saved it. I just went ahead. It literally took me less than two or three minutes to get it done, but I had some other pressing matters that were occurring in the house I needed to get to at the time, which is why I ended the uh, recording pretty much very abruptly at that point. It's an early morning here. You're going to hear me pause every now and then to get a sip of my coffee. Uh, best time for me to record because basically nobody's awake. Uh, so here we are. We're back in the Euclid galaxy. As you can see, we're up here with our ship. We're on a paradise planet. Not the best paradise planet in the world. I uh, Mind you, I really don't particularly care for a lot of it, but it's, it's still quite pretty and it's an easy place to be. But how do we get back? And that's the key. We want to get back to Eisenton because it is such a better galaxy than the one we're in. So you remember at the very end of our episode, I went ahead and I established a base there called E Foothold. And you see it says it's in the Eisenton galaxy. Okay, so I have two bases here. This one, which is where my farmer and all my stuff is, and then here, in the Eisentum. Now, before I leave, I want to do something. Uh, we're going to go in here, and you see the planet in distress. Restart mission using nearby structures. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it, because I really would rather have my... Um... Hold on, I know the word. Don't worry about it. My... Uh... <laughs> I can't think of it. It probably even says it right in here. Uh, coordinates will lead us to a, uh, not a nearby ship, but usually a settlement. That's the word. Good grief. It leads us to settlements. And I would rather have my settlement in the Eisentum galaxy, but I may not want the one that it gave me earlier. So I'm going to restart the mission, and the mission is done. See? But I'm not going to answer that broadcast. So we're going to go here, and we're going to go to our Eisentum galaxy foothold, which is literally nothing there. But the hope is that we're going to be searching for a new paradise planet over there, uh, some place we can establish a base. Now the planet I'm currently on, the, the foothold if you will, is a pretty decent planet, but we're not going to worry about that just much. We're going to look for hopefully what is a paradise planet. There were none in the system, in the solar system I was in, so we're going to search other systems using the ship I've got and take a peek around. Ah, it's nighttime here. So I will leave this base computer here just in case. And that's it. So, let's go ahead and search, if we will. You notice it says that emergency broadcast is detected. But I don't want to answer it here. I want to answer it, hopefully, in a different system. Alright, let's see. So, we're going to go, not there, into here. So, let's take a look around. So, we should have our economy scanner built in again. And we have our conflict scanner, so we can see everything. So we've got a peaceful system here, but it isn't quite what I'm looking for. I don't have a freighter yet, either. So we'll be looking for one of those, and I'll show you how to do that. So maybe we do have to have a few extra episodes built into this. Um, let's take a look around and just see what we can find. Um, I do want to head towards Galaxy Center at some point, 
So we have a pretty decent range we can go on this ship. Um, about 600, I believe. 650, give or take. Now, see, that's a pirate system. You can see where it says economy. Experimental. And to the left, you got a little pirate icon there. Yeah, we don't want to go there. Okay. Now, I don't have a conflict scanner, apparently. It says conflict data unavailable. But we can see that there's a pirate symbol there. So that is useful to know. I'm going to go ahead and select it anyway so it pulls us in. Take a look at the system real quick. And, yeah, that was this world right here. Nope, this one. Yeah. So it looks like, yeah, we got a planetary system. It's got a moon. It also says it is a Kugelab anomaly. So we may come back to this at some point. This looks like a pretty cool system to check out. Um, but we're not going to do that just yet. So let's take a quick peek around here. We're a little bit out of jump range, so I'm going to look around. Now, the economy is at two stars. We're also looking at the F setting. So if you look above it, it says 630 light years, G1F. We're looking for something in the higher numbers, something like a G7, 8, or 9 is what we really would like to find. So we'll work our way back a little bit and look for a three-star system. Here's one, and it's a G4, so that's okay. It's not exactly what we're looking for. We're kind of looking for, quote-unquote, the perfect system. Two-star, two-star, experimental one, got a two Remember, this is a very peaceful system, so we should be able to find some pretty good paradise planets in a lot of different systems. Of course, it's going to prove me wrong just because I'm recording this. Two, two, two. Uh, let's see, two. Don't go to the data unavailable ones. It's an abandoned system. That was the one we were checking out, but it was G4. Uh, let's jump over here to this section here. It's two... Three, and it's a G8. Booming economy. Okay, let's see what we got here. Uh, looks like one, two, three, four, five planets. I see a moon around the second planetary system. I can't check the third one, uh, the, four, the fifth one out, but it looks like we have at least one moon. Um, also, it says it's a Kukjelib anomaly. I don't know what that is. I've never seen that before. Oh, that's the region it's in, but it is a water system. I would rather find if I can, and we can be picky. That's the whole point. You're in the exploration portion of things. Be picky. I had someone send a comment earlier that I need to work on fill in the blank. And I was like, you know what? That may not be your niche. That may not be your way of doing things. You may not want to fight sentinels all the time. You may rather go into the exploration. You may want to farm animals or raise crops. Find what you're most what find what you most enjoy doing that gives you the best relaxation and enjoy that i like to fight sentinels because it takes a little bit of stress out of my day so a little bit of way of releasing stress if you will even though you you're hearing me my voice and saying well yeah but your voice is so calm yeah well you know that's because that's my voice i can't change that I mean, I could change it a little bit, but that would just be too wrong. So the point is, is that find what is enjoyable to you. Uh, let's see what we got here. Two star, two star. I would love to find a dissonant system as well. Uh, let's see. Let's go over here. Two. It doesn't have to be too far away. We're just working our way back at this point. Wow, it's, uh, that's bright in there. I can barely see anything. Dissonant. Three star economy booming. Let's check that out. Take a peek at it. it. Looks like a three planetary system. I don't think I see any. Where'd it go? Uh, I had it just a second ago. This one. Yeah, that's the one. Emerald Drive required. Wow. Interesting. We'll have to remember that. I don't have an Emerald Drive at the moment, but we can get one later things upgrades looks like we're going to be doing a few extra missions here just to fill things in we'll call them the epilogue missions looks like we're working our way slowly back here research all right so we did find one dissident system but it was a green star the brightness of this area is is, is huge though uh can't make anything out wow that's bright okay let's see data unavailable mathematical shipping Material Fusion, Three Star, Prosperous, and Water. Uh, let's see. Like I said, we can be picky. We're going to be sitting in here for just a little while, so get used to it. Uh, fuel Generation. 
This isn't two star. I might settle for a two star system. Possibly. I mean, settling. Uh, you heard me say it just like that. I could settle for that. It's a game for crying out loud. Two star. Oh, two dissident systems right back to back. That's pretty neat. Water, because we need the dissident system for the uh, stuff we need, you know, obviously for our ship. Because those are my favorite ships, and I will stick to them. I like solar ships, don't get me wrong, but I'm telling you, those sentinel ships are just becoming quickly my favorite. Hmm, promising, interesting. Dissident, two star. Dissident, two star. Dissident... Two star. Interesting. All right. So we're just going to keep looking around. Pirate system and dissident system. Actually, you know, that might be good. Too bad it's a G3. But that is really good because you can go to those planets and you can use your ship to farm uh, sentinels on the ground and it won't launch an attack at you. So this might be very much worth having a system here. Uh, only three planets, no moons. It's going to be hard to find a paradise planet in there because one of them is going to be a uh, uh, dissonance. So, hmm. You know, I might go here anyway because this is a very, very, very good system to have in your, under your belt. Let's go ahead and head over there. We'll establish a base there, at least. And then we'll pay attention to a little bit of our log. We'll spend, uh, we've been here about 10, 12 minutes right now. We're going to go ahead and uh, do some more here. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and land at the space station. I want to detect this. And I, I do see the thing at the bottom. Don't worry. The emergency broadcast is there. Wow, that was neat. Actually, it was so lit up, it was pretty cool for a moment there. I thought we had a really unique uh, pirate station for just a moment. All right, so we've got the pirate station locked in, so we can come back to this pirate station anytime we want. All right, so that gets us to the system. And let's just jump out of here for just a second. Looks like it was discovered by me. Okay, so I can even rename this system if I wanted to, but I'm going to hold off on that for now. Alright. What kind of planet is that? Isotope. Okay, so we're down to one planet is our choice at this point. Uh, let's see. We can't discover anything until we answer this message. So let's go ahead and answer it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. You're you're in deep doo-doo and you need help. Though the transmission is infused with static and its alien speech garbled, one thing is unmistakable. The life form... This life form is in great distress. Their broadcast contains a set of coordinates. The transmission's pre-recorded hologram fades as I shut down my starship communicator. Their coordinates point to a nearby planet. So it should be in this system. And it looks like it is on this planet. So that'll be very interesting. We can always cancel it if we go somewhere else. Uh, let's check out this planet real quick. One of these is going to be dissident. There it is. Dissident's detected. It's a tropical planet too. Interesting. All right, where is the third planet? Over here, okay. Yeah, that's definitely not a paradise planet. It's an anomaly, interesting. All right, let's head to the dissident planet because we do want to do some work there. And it doesn't look like it's too, too far away. We have to go through the rings of this one. Shunk, there we go. Looks like we've got water, plenty of it. Nice land masses. It's tropical. That really kind of makes me scratch my head a little bit because I wonder. Tropical can lend towards being parad like a paradise. We'll have to spend a couple minutes here to determine that. I'll show you something real quick here. So I think all we have on board this ship that we have is just the regular Sentinel cannons. Let me see here. Yeah, Sentinel Cannon. Okay. So let's go down. A little closer. Let things build in. 
and I'll show you what I'm talking about. We'll just fly along here real quick while we get stuck on everything as well, of course. It's not the prettiest planet in the world, I'll tell you that. What we're looking for is one of those uh, dissonant resonators, the drills, if you will. I think there's one right here. All right. Again, because it's a pirate system, watch this. I'm to DM. Inverted mirror. And you see? I can just take him out. And we got them all. Except I think that one. That one? I don't know what that is. Yeah, yeah, it was something else. Okay. So, and you see? Nobody's attacking us. So we can literally farm this stuff from above without any repercussions whatsoever. They will not send any sentinels out after us. So if you like to farm a system, look for a dissonant system that's also a pirate system. Alright, I don't know why he won't go, but... Here we go. There's another one right there. He's actually coming at me. He can see me, and he's coming at me. Okay. There we go. Oh, there was one more barrel. There it is. So there we go. So I got a couple inverted mirrors out of that. Let's check our inventory. That was pretty cool. Uh, where'd they go? There they go. Two inverted mirrors. Pretty cool. So that was good. It's good farming. So like I said, this is a great little planet to establish a base on. Just so we have some place we can go. Uh, look, there's another one. Alright. Let's do a quick scan. I got three, four mirror units. I can see them. One there. There's a second one right here. Third one there. And a fourth one right there. So this will be a great planet to do some research on. I might just keep this saved just because. All right, let's do a quick scan. I want to try to find a landing place that I can land at that's close by. And even if not, let's go over here. Closer to the water, I think, would be a nice place to be. It's not the best looking planet, like I said. This is a kind of a decent planet. But not a lot here. All right, this looks like a good place to land. Yep, there is a, something over that way. All right. So needless to say, this looks like a pretty decent place to hang out. I don't know, again, what the weather is going to be like, but I definitely want to establish a base computer here. And we will definitely come back to this at some point and go ahead and um, establish just a, a small base here. I don't think this will be my main base, but it's definitely going to be a farming outpost for getting all kinds of neat stuff. You know, all the, all the resonant crystals and stuff like that. Oh, it's going to be great. So let's rename this one. And we're going to call this, uh, let me see here. They're corrupt sentinels. So let's call this corrupt sentinel farm. And that's what we'll call this one. So we know we can come back here anytime. And we'll establish a better base here later on. All right, in the meantime, what was that? I'm curious. Oh, wow, those are biological creatures of some sort. Sweet. How many creatures on this planet? Nine? That's pretty neat. Okay, we got some of these guys. I've already discovered three of the creatures. Four of the creatures, which is the, you know, dancing pineapple there. Don't judge. I don't know what else to call them. That's five, right? I think the rest are going to be in the water, unless there's one more flying creature. Let's find out. 
one more ground, one more flying, and two underwater. Let's just check. I figure while we're here, I mean, it can't hurt. We can always use the nanites, right? Yeah, scan around just a little bit here. We will check out the water since we're close by. No reason to take the boat. Our ship, that is. It's nice to have upgraded uh, jetpack, isn't it? You can just keep going. And the ability to run is always fantastic. Oh, so that was a roller. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Neat creatures on the planet, I'll tell you that much. It'd be great to find that one more flyer at this point. And the one more ground-based creature. Sometimes they tell you it's found in a different hemisphere. And that works most of the time. I don't know how true or accurate it keeps to it, but... Now remember, you're in a pirate system, so be careful. Whenever you find these, check them out. You can usually at least get Pugnium out of them. There's no use in doing anything else there, unless you just want to get that storyline. And, and, gra and granted, it is a pretty cool storyline to go into, but we all have been talking about it so much. And there's no reason to go into it right now. Ah, there's our other ground-based creature. Uh, about to come out. There we go, got him. Alright. So that's our ground-based creature, not our flyer. That's excellent. Let's head to the water. I may call the ship out. It's a little further than I expected it to be. Okay, we got two sea creatures. Looks like we got... No, those are not sea creatures. Let's go under. And allow them to... There we go. Populate. One. And two. Okay, we're done with those. We only have one more creature to get. It's a flying creature, and we're done. So, not bad. But we're going to find that other system real quick. I was hoping to discover one more ground-based animal and we can... Oh, no, flying creature is what we're looking for. That's not it. That's a nice solar ship. A-class, huh? No, C-class. We do have sentinels on the planet, obviously. Ah, there they are. Got them. That's number nine. We discovered all of them. 2,250 nanite bonus. That's why it's very handy to do so. So we'll go ahead and grab that. Let's pull the ship in. If I want to check its landing. Uh, sublight. Anti-gravity wells only at 90%. Good. Excellent. Alright. And we will come back to this planetary system in distress at some point. I don't particularly like to have it on a... Um, radioactive planet, though. Because it's a pain in the butt to do any work on it. As far as a settlement's concerned. So we are going to probably get there to that mission at some point. Okay, let's take another look. Uh, let's see here. So we're looking for... We don't have to find a dissident system now because we've already got one. So I'm really happy about that. It'd be nice to find one, but I'm more interested in getting a high class three, uh, three system that will be close by this one. Three economy, three star economy. So we're going to take a look around. There's another pirate system there. We don't really need that. We've got one. Scientific. G8. That's really good. How many planets? One, two, three, four planets. And it looks like we got a moon as well. I kind of like that. And I do like the Corvax. Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Let's go there. Let's check it out and see what we got. Now, we've done a lot of jumping around. There's a possibility we may come into a battle. You always know just before you're about to pop out of hyperspace. You'll see images of ships. There you go. See that? So we're going to come out into to a battle. And we've always got a few right behind us. There we go. No. What about the ones I just... 
Hold on. Let's look at our radar and get these guys off our tail. Yeah, there he is. Whoops, what happened? Okay, that just froze just a touch. Oh, there he went. Oh, back the other way. We want that the old fashioned way. We're going to take him out with him. Be careful you don't shoot the ships, shoot the space station, or anything like that. He's a little too close to do anything else. Go after these guys. Remember, be careful. Don't shoot the freighter if you can if you can avoid it. Try to go through the debris area because sometimes you'll pick up materials there pretty easily. There we go. Uh, runs right into me. Yeah, our shields are almost down. We want to stay away from shooting because he's right close to the ship. I don't want to shoot his ship. I'm afraid of those. Alright, yeah, that is definitely not someone I want to mess with because he's too close to the ship. Go after this guy. to shoot the other ships too if you can avoid it. The other fighters and stuff like that that are supposed to be helping out. Okay. Excellent. We're done. Go ahead and answer the broadcast. Commendable. Thank you. That's what I got out of that. Life form must be the captain of this freighter. Looks greatly relieved. They gesture as if to welcome me aboard their vessel. So we are going to go aboard, abo aboard their vessel. Uh, let's see. I can never find it on these ships. I think it's this way, around the other side of it. Let's go around. Let's go a little ways away and we can find it a little better. Where is? There it is. Not my favorite type of freighter, of course. You know I kind of like the wedge-shaped Star Destroyer looking ones. But, let's see what we got. At the very least, we are going to get... A reward out of this. All right. Head for the deck. There we go. Main deck. Look for the orange stripe. Reddish orange stripe. Talk to the commander. Uh, and aid traveler and Corvax is all I got out of that. Lights flicker rapidly across the visor, life forms visor, and their head nods imperceptibly forwards. They seem to be showing me gratitude. They gesture toward the control panel of their flader as if to suggest I take command. Let's inspect it. You know, it's a B class. I'd rather go for an S. A is a backup. S is okay. Uh, a is okay. But I'm not going to go ahead and take this one. So I'm going to leave. Go ahead and talk to him again real quick. And they're saying the same thing, so we request permit instead, number two. And he gives me a cargo bulk head, bulkhead. My Corvax standing goes up two. My nanites, he gives me about 230 of those, and gives me, there we go, about almost 400 gold. That's pretty good. Lots of ships here if you want to trade with some people. It's up to you. But we're going to go ahead and move on. So now it's time for us to check out the planets in the system. And again, we're about a half hour in, so we're, whatever I find here, hopefully I can find a decent um, paradise planet. That would be kind of nice. That one, let's scan it. Planetary Anomaly. Okay, that's neat, because we can find some neat stuff there. This one. Kind of a red planet. Tropical again, there we go. Remember, there were at least four planets here. we got one with the rings right next to us. Let's check it out. Looks more rocky than anything else. Caustic. Yeah, that would be nice. Let's get on the other side of the freighter. Okay. Windswept. Dissonance detected. I didn't know this was a dissonance system. Isn't that interesting? 
but we do have a moon down over here someplace. So let's head that way. There it is. Wow, look at how tiny that moon is. Good grief. Let's move over and check it. Wouldn't it be interesting if it was a paradise? Ah, radioactive. Could be that lucky. So we do have a windswept dissonant planet with activated copper. That's going to be a tough planet to do anything on. I like my other dissonant planet better. So let's go ahead and back out to the galaxy map. We're going to look for one more system. Uh, construction, high voltage. Is it say dissonant? It does say dissonant. I didn't even notice that. Good grief. There's another dissonant system. Lots of dissonant systems around here. Uh, high voltage, water. What do we got? One, two, three, four more planets. And it's a G7. That's not bad. Uh, what do we got here? This one? Okay, no, G1. G1. G9. Wow, okay. I didn't know there were too many of those. G7. What about down here? Dissident. Dissident. Two star. Three star water. G2. Yeah. What do we got? G3. G9. And it's a three star and water. One, two, three, four, five planets. I don't see any moons. That's okay. Yes, I do. Planet number four has a moon floating around it. That's good. I like moons because searching a moon is a lot easier when you're looking for uh, materials, things like that, or, or settlements. Uh, crashed ships, very easy to find on moons. Well, mostly pretty easy to find on moons. Easier than regular planets. So, that's the way we're going to go. This might be the system. And my coffee's getting cold. Okay. Warped 40 times, huh? All right, let's check this one out first. Rattling. Ah, there's going to be some interesting stuff on that planet. There's one tucked behind it. Let's check this one. Overgrown. High Sentinel activity. I'm not too keen about that. Let's check this one out. Uh, I don't even see any water on it. It's probably not going to be paradise. Capped. And there's the moon. Let's see if we can focus on it from here. That is tiny. Got it. Let's see if we can keep locked on it. High temperature, so hot moon. That is very cool to have. Unknown planet with rings. Temperate. High sentinel activity, though. Not going to be quite a paradise planet. All right, let's get to the little guy over here. Just check it out. Yeah, he flew right through those guys. Can we lock in on this one? All right, we're going to have to get closer because we're literally at the number of this one. There it is. Check it out. Contaminated. Yeah, this isn't exactly what I was looking for. I was really hoping for a decent system there. We'll keep looking. I'll take a few extra minutes. Uh, let's see. Hyperdrive has no fuel. Okay. Nope. Hello. Charge. That would be you. All right. That should do it. Okay, what do we got? That's a shame because, you know, G9, man, that's that's an awesome system. It's just, uh, if we could have found, what do you know, another system dissonant with pirates. Fabulous. Look at that. Two moons out there, too. Wow. High tech, black market. Ah, it's tempting. It is really tempting, but I'm looking for something else. So we'll come back. Maybe we'll see it again one day. Research pirate. Data unavailable. Let's go down here a little bit. Dissident. Water. What about you? You, you, you? No. You? Okay. No. 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 Wait, 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 wait. G6. It's okay. Like I said, if I get an 8 or a 9, I'm really interested in that. So, like I said, we can we have a choice. We can be picky here. Really, really picky. 
Uh, G6. Let's go go over here a little bit. What does that say? Indium drive. Okay, sorry. G2, G8 with 2, star. G8, experimental, booming, and 3 star, Corvax. 1, 2, 3, 4 planets, and I see one with, with a moon, the outer planet. And the second planet has a moon as well. 4 planets, 2 moons. That's 6 planetary objects. Let's see what we can find. I'm very curious. I have good feelings about this, but I think it'll turn out to be good. Alright, what do we got? Wow, look at this. I kind of like this. I hope these planets turn out to be pretty cool. Hockey and aggressive. That could come in handy, though. For me. Maybe not you. But for me. I like having aggressive sentinel planet. Mountiful. But with high sentinel activity. Not quite the price planet. Let's focus on the moon. Looks like a gray one. Icy. Okay, well that's good. I mean, we're getting all of it here. Iridescent. What was this one? Foggy. So we got the humidity. Bountiful. Okay. So that's four planetary objects. Let's go this way. Paradise planet right here. Fantastic. I am curious about the other planet on the other side. Let's take a quick peek. Because the space station is going to be right on, right next to this paradise planet, which is really convenient. Can we lock in on it? Yep, we can. And that is... Plated. Okay, well that's a decent planet too. Alright, good. Let's check out our paradise planet. Where's the space station? Right there. Let's hit the space station first. It's excellent. Excellent, excellent. I think we found the system we've been looking for. Good economy. Excellent economy. It's a G8, so it's really high up there on the list of uh, decent places. We could... I don't know if we can cancel that one mission we check. No, we can't. We'll have to jump someplace else and then come back to this one. So maybe we can get it here. The settlement, that is. Okay. So we now have establishment at the, at the space station. Conflict level is gentle. That is awesome. So we should... Less chance of getting attacked by pirates. Of course, we're going to get attacked by pirates as soon as I leave the space station launch. So what we can do is head straight to this planet. Looks like it's got water too. That is fabulous. Um, I like over here. I want. I want to get towards the daylight, so I can take check it out a little bit care, more careful. All right. Let's take a look. Not bad. Thirty-eight minutes. We found a decent planetary system. Red water, that's interesting. It's a good contrast. Nice plants. Kind of like this place. This is going to be neat. Alright, let's do a quick scan, see if we can find anything on the ground. Scan the other way. Yep, not finding much over here. Let's go a little further out. Oh, looks like we got one little place right there. Okay, that is actually uh, one of those. Yeah, it's a transmission tower. Communication tower is really what I would like to call it. Let's go over this way. I'd rather find a minor settlement if it's at all possible. Because you know how I am about having a minor settlement nearby. I'd really rather have that. We don't necessarily need it anymore because we can always bounce to our base that has a minor settlement there. Let's jump over here. It's actually quite... The contract is, is neat. The blue sky, I kind of like that. I 
I'm not finding anything here. Uh, and I think I'm heading out to the ocean. I might be. So let's let's check out a different area. Let's go a little further out, and then we'll turn around. And check the planet from a distance. Alright. So let's go more inland. Let's go more over here. And check things out. Isonomous. Isonomous? Isonomous? Did I have that right? I think I did. We'll check it in a minute. There we go. Scan. Something there. I don't think it's much of anything, to be honest. Yeah, just a little bit of a campsite there. Let's take a look around. We'll head a little bit more north. I kind of like this because it's very... It's got a lot of mountainous terrain without being too tall. So I kind of like that, so... this a lot. Oh, wait, what's that? Let's go check that out. It's probably just another campsite because it's not on anything really solid right there. Yeah, that's just a tiny little campsite. Okay, let's keep going. A little bit further. Not the most exciting of missions here. What have we here? A little teeny tiny campsite. It. Very interesting. You'd think you, you would have found something. I'm going to use my economy scanner here in just a second because I think we are stagnating. Yeah, we don't have anything on board that we need to worry about. I don't think we had anything on board. Okay, good. Yeah, we did. Okay, I am not seeing anything. All right, so our scanner's recharged. Let's pull it up. Scan for trading outpost. Something over here. I don't think this is it, but check this out. Nope, that's just one of those little campsites. Trading outpost is out this way. How far away is it? Piece of cake, 12 minutes. I am not going to wait that long. Up we go. Oh, look at that. It's on the other side of the ocean. Alright. So this should be pretty good. I don't mind having a trading outpost nearby rather than a minor settlement. That's okay. I can handle that. And knowing that it's there is good. Now we just need to find some place we'd like to settle down. I think we have a building there. That's an abandoned facility. Okay, good. The good thing about being near water is that you do have access to a lot of uh, other items that you need, like pearls and things like that. So if you can get close to the water, big water bodies, or big bodies of water, water bodies, that's pretty good, um, that would be better. Let's get across this rise here. Looks like we've got some lower ground over there. So we know the trading up is behind us. That's fine. Uh, what's that over there? It's low ground, but not quite water. Let's go this way. Yeah, see, it's just little pebbles here and there. That's okay. We need deeper. I kind of like this place, though, like I said. It's pretty neat. Big rocks sticking up here and there. Nice plants. Just zipping along real 
nicely here. Okay, all right, now it looks like we're getting into more watery areas. At least I thought we were. Yeah, that's a bigger body of water right there. Anything here? No, I don't care. I like all this water around me here. Especially over this way, look at that. Okay, this looks nice. I really like this here, yeah. I was hoping to find something here though. Look at the bubbles. We have bubbles here too, that's awesome. All right, let's crash over, I mean land over here. Up on the rise. First contact. Isonymous, yes. And look at that body of water. Look at that view. Come on. That's great. Ten species on the planet. We'll find them later. Looks like we've got what over here? There was something over here. What is that? Metal fingers. Okay. One thing you want to look for too is, is, is see if you can find. Yeah, see we've already got some armored clams nearby. Every now and then they'll reset so you can get that stuff. This is a very nice planet. We're going to go ahead and establish a base right here. We've got a very great view all the way around us. We could go to the top of the mountain, but I don't like to be up that high. I'd rather be up down a little bit lower. Close to everything we need. We'll put it right in the middle here. Rest in colony. We're going to claim the base. So we got some really good planets nearby, a planet that has aggressive sentinels, so we can do some fighting over there when we need to, we, especially when we need regular sentinels to build up our nanite poppers. Um, so that's going to be great. Looks like we got a good view of some planets nearby. There's some ships flying over right now. Okay, this will be really nice. Let's take a look and see what it looks like at night. You can do that by going into camera mode, point down and hit the F button. It puts the, moon, the sun on the other side of the planet. Ah, very nice. The grass glows. Fabulous. Look, you can see two planets there with the moon in between them. Uh, very nice. You can see that planet over there. That's excellent. Oh, that's very pretty. Yeah, this will be a great place. Look at that. Ah, it's so nice. All right, good. I think we like this. So what do we name this one? Let's see. Why don't we name this going to have to name it for something personal, so we're going to start with a lawn ball. And then... Paradise. Just very... Let's make it very simple. We can always come back. Uh, how do I spell paradise? Paradise. Base. There we go. And that'll be our main base. We will build here at some point, and we'll show... Uh, in the future, we'll come back to the save, and we'll build more. And go from there. Excellent. All right. So what do we got left on our agenda of logs? We want a planet in distress. So we really want to get that going. We'll save a a particular episode for doing that. Um, really, industrial surveying is nothing special. That is basically uh, installing in our multi-tool a surveying device, which we do not have. We'll have to get it from the anomaly. So why don't we finish out this episode by visiting the anomaly. Um, we'll get this industrial surveying out of the way and resources. Uh, we will get the remembrance because we have to get the heart of the sun. We need to get some platinum, which we don't have right now. And then we can complete the installation. Heart of the sun is hard to do. It's, it takes a lot of progress to get to here. So this is going to be an interesting install installation, but it's very handy to have because you can get into certain areas and acquire certain knowledge of the game as you get that installed. So, all right. So let's head up to the anomaly. We have a base here finally. Here's a little bit of lore that we're going to learn here. Um, we're about to visit Nada and Polo. So, as you know, we've reset the galaxy. And let's see what Nada and Polo have to say. You remember in the last episode I mentioned how Apollo um, 
Artemis has probably exists. He probably exists again. She. She probably exists again as well. But neither one of them will have any knowledge of me. Or each other. And the same thing with Null. Null has restarted and he won't remember a thing. He may not even be called Null anymore. He's probably called a different name. Is it first? Is it last? Welcome regardless. Traveler Entity is always welcome aboard our home. Try to tell Nada about the Atlas. If you have something to tell me, Traveler Entity, Nada chooses not to hear. You're welcome aboard our home. Leave Nada in peace. Ouch. Doesn't want to hear a thing. Let's see what Polo has to say. You have spoken to Nada? Joy, new arrivals, new friends. Tell Polo the truth. Do not speak, friend. Nada tells me. It is first, it is last, so it goes. Some things I do not want to discover. Wow. Am I right? So that ends that story arc. Now you know that they've reset as well, but it's all back to here. So while we're here, we have nanites. I'm going to go ahead and get some stuff. We need to first upgrade. Let, let's go to the multi-tool vendor. Uh, we don't really need that multi-tool. And we're going to go ahead and check out his research because there's some things we need. So first thing we need is we need a survey device. We can't get that until we get the waveform recycler. So we'll spend some cash on that. Sometimes it kicks you out depending upon which button you hit. Sometimes it doesn't. 320 for the survey. Uh, we do need the optical drill. And it kicked us out no matter what we hit. So it's gonna it's just one of the many glitches in the game that you have to deal with. Voltaic amplifier, I do want. Uh, I don't really care about the cloaking device, we'll get it later. Same thing with the pulse spitter, I'm not worried about it. Scatter blaster, blaze javelin, plasma launcher. Barrel ionizer. We do kind of need the upgrades for the bolt caster because that is gonna be our main weapon of choice. Um, and the ricochet module. There we go. Uh, the geology cannon we don't really need. Paralysis mortar is even better. We do need that. All right. So we've got all the upgrades we need from them. Now we have these technologies built into us and we can get them anytime we want. Hyperion, what do you have for me? Research starship upgrades. We're going to do the same thing. We definitely need a conflict scanner. Um, I'd never used a cargo scan deflector. It's not bad, but I've never used it. Uh, let's go ahead and get the instability drive because that leads to the other upgrades for your pulse engine. Which are these two? And this one. Okay, what else do we need? Emergency warp, good idea. It kicked us back out again. Uh, let's see, we need the emerald drive and we need the indium drive. Okay, we got everything now. Uh, let's get the thrusters. Glad we have all these extra nanites, right? Uh, we need the launch auto charger so we can charge our launcher as it's sitting there on the ground doing nothing. You can see we have the infernite accelerator so we can install that. I don't care about the ballista, uh, the phase beam, or really upgrading the launch rocket launcher. It's not really necessary. We do use the what's it says photon cannon, but that's really the same thing as the. Uh, the main guns on your sentinel ship so it's not a bad idea to get this it's worth it so you can last longer in a battle with it and last but not least i don't think that last one is needed yeah, let's get the ablative armor and that's it that's all we need here let's go to him exosuit research what do we need oxygen rerouting is for breathing underwater it's good to have I strongly recommend do not get the um, rocket boots. They are annoying. Well, at least to me they are. Some people might like them. You get the efficient water jets. You can install it if you want, if you have enough space. Same thing with the neural stimulator. It gives you a little bit extra as well. As well as the air burst engine for persistent falling. And you'll actually recharge as you fall. So actually not a bad idea to get those. Man, I'm getting tired of it kicking me out. There we go. Let's get that. All right, we don't really need the translators right now. Shield lattice is not a bad idea. The aeration membrane is also very good. Uh, makes you help, helps you last longer underwater. See, we, we, as you see, we're plowing through the nanites here. We don't need the C-class upgrades because we're getting them, but the two things we need are these two. I really want the personal refiner, so now we don't have to carry a refiner around with us. 
and last but not least the trade rocket so you can trade while you're on a planet just by putting your stuff inside the trade rocket and it launches out and goes to the space station and back you get your money later so kind of cool thing to have all right we're done here let's get our suit upgrade 200,000 units ouch this over here is your construction research so you can you can research your large prefabs small prefabs technology so I can get the other landing pad now for only one of the salvage data and I've got 50 right now I can get a large I can I've already got the large refiner I can get a food maker that comes in handy as well uh, things I recommend um, the health station is probably a good idea to have that um, oxygen harvester I've never really been keen on it's not a bad thing to have but you know if you want to get it you can get it your appearance modifier you've already got one at your main base but you can build another one if you wish uh, let's see light boxes you do need lights noise box sphere light floor I do like the light floor personally beat boxes are up to you if you guys want to create music and stuff save points we've already got those Short-range teleporter is really good to have. Communication station so you can leave messages for people. That's always nice to have. You got your feeders if you want to raise animals. Good deal. So that's technology. Here's all of your um, roamers that you can get. Um, we will get those as we progress in certain other areas. There's your underwater stuff. Decals, uh, these are accoutrements and uh, stuff for your base that you can decorate with. Decorations, if you will. See, lots and lots of decorations. On my main save, I've got a good amount of these already. Uh, you can see you got lamp posts and stuff. I'll go ahead and grab that because I think that's a good one to have. Um, and see, we already have all these. Um, the one thing we don't have is we don't have a mineral extractor. It's doesn't. It pretty much has gone the way of the dodo for the most part because uh, most of those things are not as valuable anymore. So, I do have the floor switch, as you know. Um, so, gas, supply depot, and pipelines. I'm not going to worry about them at this point. And then you have your planters. And we haven't progressed all the way through this, so we will get all these plants later on with the farming modules uh, through doing the farming uh, quest line, sub-quest line, if you will. Um, you already have a lot of these items, but it's a good idea to get more if you want to create a halfway decent base. I will get these because I think they're worth it. They're only, they only cost usually one a piece for the most part. Here. There we go. Uh, let's see. Let's get the wall. Uh, door. Caps. See, I'm already I'm blasting through this stuff, right? More doors. Because I plan on building with this for the most part on my first base. Windows. I love this big window as well. That always looks great. Um, rectangular door. Power door if we want to do that. There we go. We got all of these now. So that's all opened up and I've only got seven salvage data left. Um, roofing materials. Always a good idea. We'll, we'll spend some on that. Uh, corner. Do we need anything else out of there? Because we're down to two. Sloping, one, and the corner. I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Okay, we're all done. And we get to listen to all this the whole time. All right. Now, if you want to know what else is in here, if you can hear me over all that, you have your synthesis laboratory as well. Here you can get the recipes for all these so you can build them on your own, including the quantum computer, which is usually a good idea. Again, it's purchased with nanites. The hydraulic wiring. The amino chambers are really not as necessary but get your Atlas Passes. They do come in handy to get these later on. You will get them through the rewards section. But I've got the Nanites. I'm just going to spend it here so I have it. But you've also got the valuable products as well. And you can get these as you wish. This costs a lot to get. But the thing is, is that later on when you want to make these things, the Fusion Igniter and the Stasis Device, the Stasis Device is worth so much. It's worth so much. It is, is worth... Uh, two, I think 250 million a piece. Same thing, I think, with the cryo pump, if I remember correctly. Um, so usually, I, or I think the fusion igniter, I don't remember which one of these. I think both of those are worth quite a bit. But you have to get all of these as a recipe and build them up. It takes a little while. So 
that tells you what we can get from there as it continues to chuck away. Alright, so we're all set here. I've got everything I need. Let's hit up this guy over here on the left. So we are down to how many? Uh, 1,680 nanites. We'll hit Ares up. We'll tell them of our discoveries. Transmit data log. You've seen much, but understand not for me, but please take this. How many do we get? It's not going to tell me for a little bit. Let's give it a second to tell me all the blueprints it's put in here. Almost done. Almost done. There it is. How many nanites he give us? 650. That's pretty good. And he'll give us the same thing. Helios will give us the same thing. All right. You notice if you ask about derelict freighters, he will give you something. I've acquired emergency signal scanner from a distant iteration. It is yours if you wish to see those in past. That's excellent. So you get an emergency signal scanner. It normally costs you millions. So you can get things from him on a regular basis. Transmit flora. And he gave us... Ah, oh, that's not bad. He gave us 50 nanites. That's okay. All right. Um... There, that was the wrong button. You can talk to these fellows over here too. We can also hit the Quicksilver vendor while we're here and everything like that. But basically, your adventures in the anomaly now have to do with this, doing your weekend anomaly mission. Check my channel for more of that. And you can get your Quicksilver missions as well. So that's why you're here. Also, if you have multiplayer turned on, you can check some things out. One more thing I'm going to show you while we're in here and then we're going to end this episode is you got the main terminal over here. Oh, look who we have here. <laughs> you get your main transporter over here, which is much bigger than yours. Interstellar Terminus. So you can go back to your own bases, to the space stations you visited. You can also go to different groups and stuff like that. But then there's some featured ones. So you can go to the 12 Towers by Mr. Fishhead. Uh, you've got the refueling station in Helios 42. And you got Perfect Perk Coffee by Sparkle Rain. Sometimes these stations that are highlighted are also in different galaxies. So you can see this one's in Euclid. This one is in the Zebrun galaxy. And this one is in... Um, that's weird. It doesn't say. Might be in the same galaxy as you're in. So this might be in the Isenton. So that tells you where you can go. Also gives you your current systems and then back to all. So we can, you know, go back to our corrupt sentinel farm. We can go to our paradise planet and the current system we're in and do stuff. And you notice that these say Euclid. This is in Euclid too, but it's because of your main base right now. This is where everything's found. Okay. So that gives you an idea of what you can do. All right. Let's just jump in and out of the ship. We'll put a save point here and we'll put a pin in this. I did say we were going to do the survey, but we're going to hold off on that. We'll finish that up in the next episode. Again, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, we're basically going to end it here, and we want to thank you for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe. Um, moving right along, we're going to go ahead and complete out a whole bunch of the submissions, get the settlement going, and things like that, and we'll take care of all the things that we need to do. Uh, so that should take care of it. Folks, again, thanks you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.